Deus Ex is a hybrid first-person shooter and role-playing game created by Ion Storm and published by IDOS Interactive. Released in 2000, Deus Ex was a game that strayed away from the Twitch shooter formula that was popular at the time. United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition Agent J.C. Denton is assigned to combat terrorism in a dystopian future where conspiracies unfold involving powerful organizations which include the Illuminati and Hong Kong Triads. Deus Ex played out like no other FPS of its time. It's much more than just picking up weapons and ammo to gun down enemies that stand in your way. You have an immersive world to explore and manipulate, the open-ended gameplay is dictated by the skills you choose and the items you carry in your limited inventory. There is always more than one way to complete your objectives. You can override security systems, explore the area and find an alternate path, or you can walk through the front door and blast everyone. You decide how the game plays out. Stealth plays a huge role in the gameplay. You don't always have sufficient firepower to launch a frontal assault, and you can't take much damage from them. Sneaking past enemies is usually your best option, and there's always plenty of boxes and walls you can hide behind. Some areas have a ventilation shaft or some sort of hidden area that allow you to bypass a large concentration of enemies altogether. But if necessary, you can thin out their ranks with a few silent takedowns. Throughout the game, you will gain skill points which you can put towards the various skills of your character. They determine how effectively you use items in your inventory and is a factor when it comes to deciding what items to keep and what to leave behind. They can also determine which areas you can access. The swimming skill allows you to reach underwater areas which would otherwise be inaccessible without it. In addition to the customizable skills, your nano augmentations play a big part in Deus Ex. Augmentation canisters you come across can give you one of two enhancements, which also forces you to make choices that affect the game. For example, you may have to decide whether you want to lift heavy objects or improve melee combat effectiveness. You can reveal hidden areas or defeat security systems by repositioning large and heavy crates, or you can greatly improve your ability to make silent takedowns. Both their skills and augmentations will determine the easiest way to complete the objective. And of course you have weapons. Lots and lots of weapons. But because you have limited space in your inventory, you have to pick and choose what you carry with you and what you leave behind. You have an assortment of lethal and non-lethal melee weapons, concealable pistols and crossbows, shotguns, rifles, and explosives. You can obtain mods for upgrading your weapons that give it varying effects, such as increasing accuracy and range, reducing recoil, or giving it a sound suppressor or scope. Preferably, these are used on weapons you plan on keeping the entire game. The open-ended gameplay is the key feature that made Deus Ex stand out. When you receive a new mission objective, there's always multiple ways you can complete it. You can listen to conversations and talk to people to find out more information. They may end up directing you to another person or give you a code to access a building. O-L-E. That's 665 tree. You can also direct the flow of the conversation, which may affect the information you receive, and whether or not they become hostile. I would too. Maybe I'll check it out for you. You cop! Data cubes usually contain information for locating secret areas or login information for computers and security systems. Some are found in plain sight on a table, others are hidden behind something. These notes are added underneath the mission objectives, and you can add in your own notes as well. Then you go over to the computer system and log in using the information you found. If you can't find the information you need to get into the system, or just for the sake of convenience, you can hack into it if you have the necessary skill, and it works out all the same. Lockpicks and multi-tools are the most valuable items you will come across, these are one-time use items, but they can be used to gain access to a room or building when you can't find the code or key to unlock it. The number of lockpicks and multi-tools required to bypass a lock depend on the system's strength and your skill level with the respective items. Or if you feel like making some noise, you could just blow it open and save those items for later. Of course, that would alert nearby enemies. 
Whatever it is you do, the game will remember it. For example, at one point in the game, your objective is to assassinate a man sponsoring a terrorist organization. One of your fellow agents comes along to watch you in action. You can choose to kill him on the spot to complete the objective. You can choose to interrogate him and find out more information about what's going on, which means disobeying direct orders. You can just leave, in which case the other agent will kill him. Or you can just kill them both and call it a day. Again, the game will remember everything you do. There's no mission failed screen, and you don't have to reload a saved game. But everything you do will affect any future interactions with every character. It's because of these decisions you can make that, naturally, the game will have multiple endings. You decide how the game is played, and you decide how the game ends. All of these choices result in a very high replay value, and you have multiple routes to explore each time you play the game. Deus Ex ran under the Unreal Engine, so you can expect a lot of features in terms of scalability. The level design is as realistic as it could possibly be at the time. You have concrete bunkers with high-tech equipment and top-of-the-line security systems, and you have ghettos and shanty towns full of bums. Throughout the game, you travel to many locations across the globe, from New York City to Hong Kong and Paris, so you'll come across very diverse environments. The Unreal Engine allowed the architecture to be more realistic than what you normally find in a video game at the time. Up close, you see more detail in the walls instead of the blurriness from the resulting texture filters. You also have mirrors in the bathrooms that actually behave like mirrors, and even the highly polished floors in the corporate offices and government buildings show a reflection. The levels still look good today as it did back in 2000. Then there's the 3D models. They were good at the time, but as you can see, they haven't aged very well. Their skins clash with the surrounding environment, where you have highly detailed textures on the level's architecture and low-resolution skins on the 3D models. Even their talking animations look weird. I guess you can't have everything. Audio plays a huge role in Deus Ex. Enemies can detect you based on the amount of noise you make, but the sound effects themselves are more or less generic. The music varies by location and depends on what's happening. When you do get into a firefight, the music changes to an upbeat, adrenaline-pumping soundtrack. Once the action dies down, the music reverts to a softer, ambient soundtrack suitable for sneaking around the place. The voice acting make up a substantial part of the audio. Everyone has something to say. The speech quality differs for each character, with varying accents and sentence structures making some characters annoying to listen to at times, but the quality usually hovers above par. As dark and serious as his brother. JC's monotone voice has no trace of emotion, so it may be difficult to like him as a protagonist. On the streets and wearing uniforms. Doesn't the Chinese government care? Whether the voice acting is good because it's intentionally bad, or bad because it tries to be good, I leave this to everyone to decide for themselves. What is it? Oh my god, JC, a bomb! A bomb! When it was first released, Deus Ex had no multiplayer support. But because of the popularity of Deathmatch continuing to rise, the game was patched to include multiplayer. The gameplay does have that tacked-on feel to it, rather than the solid design present in other games. All of your skills are maxed out, and you can choose which augmentations you have in the multiplayer options. In-game, you can only carry three weapons and very limited ammo. Instead of running with the accuracy and recoil mechanics of the weapons, the game plays out more like the typical fast-paced Twitch shooter without the fast pace. The patch came with its own multiplayer maps, so at least some effort was put into it. The PlayStation 2 port is called Deus Ex The Conspiracy. It goes without saying, the game had to be simplified to work within its limitations. You had no keyboard to type in usernames and passwords, and no mouse to move items around in your inventory. These had to go. While there's only minor changes to the layouts of each level, the texture quality had to be lowered, and the levels had to be split up to fit in memory. 
this means you will frequently see the load screen more so than the PC version. At the very least, this port had more detail on the 3D models and FMV cutscenes for the opening and endings. The overall delivery was decent enough, but considering the complexity of this game, I would not recommend this version to anyone. The demo was a very large download at the time, 139 megabytes, and only included the full first mission. Considering the nature of the game, you could literally spend hours on end going through this mission, exploring every part of the level, and completing it in different ways. This is how you let players try before they buy. Deus Ex is a game well deserving of its multiple Game of the Year awards. If you like to explore the world and avoid fighting whenever possible, the game rewards you for that. If you like it old school and go in with guns blazing, you can do that too. It caters to multiple playstyles, and that is what makes this game great. Deus Ex is now owned by Square Enix, and you can purchase the game from Steam. I would recommend this game to anyone because, really, this is Deus Ex we're talking about here. Every time you mention it, someone will reinstall it. Whatever the case, this is one game you absolutely have to play.